there is an army rising up to break every chain because God has provided all that's necessary so every chain can be broken hello God bless you I want to encourage you to make this month a month of thankfulness just just thank God for for everything around you notice the things to be thankful for instead of the things that are absent instead of the things that are missing even the little things be thankful for we have to cultivate a thankful heart amen I want to encourage anybody who lives in the fo the front royal area there is a Wailing Women Repentance Revival Restorer of the Breach according to Isaiah 58:12 December the 12th to the 17th from 7 o'clock to about 10 o'clock this year 2021 at Love and Faithfulness Church 100 an 11 Water Street, Front Royal, Virginia, and I'm privileged to be one of the speakers the 16th of December. So I want to encourage you to come out, and I'm going to come out to pray. Pray that God's, God's heart will penetrate the hearts of the people. Amen? Before I do my message today, I want to tell my members some of the things that I may say today or any day may sound harsh to you, but it's what God wants. It's what he wants said to those who will listen. So be encouraged and pray. Pray for the heart of God to touch the people pray that the word of God will go across the, the land and stir up in the hearts of the people. Amen? Well, today, my message has three parts. And today I'm going to do the first part. And hopefully I'll finish all three before December is over. What does God want? And have you asked him is the title of my message. What does God want? Have you asked him? Too many believers have a zeal without knowledge. They're opinionated, arrogant, overbearing, and, and plain all wrong. Romans 10, 1 to 4 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God of Israel is that they may be saved for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Father, this is your word. This is your truth. These are your people. Holy Spirit, touch hearts. Speak through me your oracles to wake up and stir up the hearts of your people, your bride. And thank you for doing it, Lord. Work mighty miracles tonight across the land. In Jesus' name, amen. So the people, God says, have a zeal for him. But it's like the scripture says, they acknowledge God, but they tie his hands. They deny his power. The righteousness, is their own, their own thoughts, their own feelings, their own way, their own opinions. And not stopping to ask God, God, 
What is your opinion? What do you think? What do you want? What do you say? What do you see? After all, he is the creator. And yes, he does have an interest and an investment of his blood in our lives. He says his plans for us are good, to give us a hope, to give us a future. So when we get so passionate about what we think and what we feel and call it God's opinion, we need to change that. I know I was talking to a friend just the other day, and her opinions were so strong. And she's saying, God, you know, I feel God. I feel this is what God thinks. I feel this is what God said. I'm telling you, I could not get a word in edgewise. And when she was done, it was only about 12 something. And I usually stay in my office until five or six, working on the messages, working on what God wants me to do. But I was done. I, I felt so done, so depressed because of her opinions, because of that thing that just dragged me down. I finally was able to say to her, have you asked God what he thinks? And that stopped her for a minute. And she did admit, you know, I never have. And as we do this message tonight and next Thursday and the Thursday after, the most important thing that God wants is that you understand that you need to ask his opinion. You need to ask what he thinks before you mouth off, and especially mouth off that he says or he feels. We can know the mind of Christ, but we cannot know the mind of Christ without seeking it out without searching it out through his word revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. When she was done with me, I had to knock. I, I, I mean, I was done. I couldn't even concentrate. I couldn't even think. I really got depressed. And I got out of my office. I had to force myself to go until about three. And then I was done. And all that night, I was depressed. And it's only the next morning when I got up to do my Bible study and I asked God, what, what is this? That he began to speak to me and began to talk to me. And that lifted my spirit again. So I want to encourage you today. Don't be so opinionated and arrogant and overbearing when it's not God's word, when it's not God's truth, when you haven't heard God say, yes, this is what. I believe, when you haven't seen it in his word. So we need zeal. We need a passion for the Lord. If we don't have a passion for the Lord, then we become spiritually bored, and then the enemy can bring anything to fill that void that's in us and further separate us from God. So we do need zeal. We do need passion but we need knowledge. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But the saddest part of that, it says, they rejected knowledge. It's not just that they don't know. It's that they don't want to know. They're so full of their own opinions, their own thoughts. I mean, we're so educated in this day. We can find anything on Google. Just Google it. And we forget the creator, the one who created it all, who is all knowledgeable, who is all truth. So he says, my people reject knowledge. And he says, because you reject knowledge, I will reject you. And that's the sad part. And that's the part that God wants you to understand today. His word is truth. 
His, his laws are set. He's not going to reverse it for nobody. He didn't reverse it for Jesus. He's not going to reverse it for us. We have to come in line with his word and stop wanting him to come in line with us. Like if he's our puppet. He says, because you reject knowledge, I will reject you. And he says, oh, and this is sad, and I will forget your children. We don't want that. We don't want that. So we need zeal, but with knowledge. So we need to ask God for his opinion, his will. Have you bothered to ask God for his plan, for his opinion, for his will? Let's look at the, we're going to look at several people. Today we're going to look at one, Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul. It says in Acts chapter 9 that Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and desired of him letters to take to Damascus to take all the synagogues in Damascus that says if he finds anyone, anyone, anyone proclaiming Christ, that he will bind them up, bound them, chain them, and bring them to Jerusalem. So he was set with letters, and he's on his way. And he's going to find everyone. He's going to knock on all the doors and find everyone who serves Christ. And he's going to tie them up, bind them up, and bring them to the law. And it says in verse 3 of Acts chapter 9, As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly, suddenly, there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And that's what we need. We need a suddenly to come upon us, where the Lord can break through, and we can hear his voice calling our name, where we can actually be knocked off of our high horses, we can be knocked off like he was, knocked off of his horse, fell to the earth. He heard the voice of Jesus. And Jesus says, you're persecuting me. What you're doing, your zeal for me, for God, because he didn't accept the God part, Jesus. He accepted God, Jehovah but not Jesus. So the zeal he had for God was not with knowledge. We go on to read in Acts chapter 9, verse 5. Saul answered, Who are you, Lord? Somehow he knew. He knew. And this is what my prayer is. It's not you hearing me. It's not you hearing your favorite preacher. It's you hearing the voice of the Lord. And because he's real and there's a connection in you to him, that spirit connection, you'll know without a shadow of a doubt. Immediately he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. I am Jesus, whom you persecute. All that you're doing to these people who are serving me, you're persecuting me. And Jesus said in Acts 9.5, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. You know what reminds me when you get angry? 
you know, and you kick the wall or kick the dog or kick something. Well, they're pricks. And when you kick against the pricks, all you do is injure yourself. You hurt yourself. You bloody your feet. And you know, all of us as believers must get to the place where we ask, who are you, Lord? In other words, I, I, I've heard, like Job says, with the heirs, but who are you? I want to see with my eyes. We must get to that place. If not, our opinions will rule, and our opinions is not doing anything for our country right now. Notice, he was persecuting Jesus full of zealousness, but knowledgeness, knowledgeless. And that's what we do. Our knowledgeless jargon that we speak so proudly, so arrogantly, and our knowledgeless actions persecute Jesus. We really call him a liar. So we too must, like Saul, humble ourselves under his mighty hand. It says in verse 6 of Acts chapter 9, trembling and astonished. He was trembling and he was astonished. And he says, Lord, what will you have me to do? Look at that. No arguments. No jargon, no if and, no maybes, no nothing. It's just, who are you, Lord? And what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? And we need in this hour to get to that place. And we cannot get to that place until we come off of our high horse. And then God sent him help. In Acts chapter 9, verse 10, there was a certain disciple in Damascus, Ananias. And God came to him in a vision and said, Ananias, oh, will God come to us in a vision and call our names? Like he called Samuel, like he called Ananias here, like he called Lazarus from the dead. Ananias. And I said, Behold, I am here, Lord. He didn't say, Who are you, Lord? He knew it was the Lord. He didn't argue, I can't get out of my bed. No. He said, I'm here, Lord. Show up for duty. Show up for duty. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prays. Mm -mm -mm. One knock off of his horse, he became blind, and now he's praying. Will we become blind to the things that we see, to our opinions, so that we can begin to see what he wants? The Lord said to Ananias, Saul has seen in a vision that a man named Ananias is coming and will put his hand on him that he might see again. And this is the hour, beloved, when God is going to begin to pour out, like it said in Joel 2 and Acts 2, his spirit upon all flesh. We're there. Many have already entered in. And I'm encouraging you to lay down your opinions, lay it down, lay down your jargon, your knowledgeless jargon, and ask God, who are you? What do you want? What would you have me to do? Because we have to get God's big picture, not your opinion, not my opinion, not man's opinion, not the opinion of the government. In verse 13 of Acts 9, Ananias said, Lord, I've heard from many of this man. In other words, I heard that he's coming to kill us. 
and you want me to go? Lord, I heard. And you see, you got to understand Saul's resume. Acts 22 says in verse 3, he's a Jew born in Tarsus of Sicilia, brought up in the city on the Gamil, under the strictest of the laws. He knew the laws. He knew Genesis, Exodus. He knew Leviticus. He knew Numbers. He knew, he knew word for word those five books. He knew it. Very strictly he was brought up. And he was zealous toward God as the people are today. I persecuted the way, the believers, to death binding and delivering them to prison, both men and women. And the high priest can bear witness and all the counsel of the elders because I received letters from them to take to the brethren in Damascus so that I can bring in chains all those who served Christ. So Saul wasn't just a knowledgeless person, he was one of the most educated, you would say he had his PhD in the law, very well educated, very well versed, he knew the law, he knew, but this is what he did, and Ananias knew what he did. But God says, and this is what God is saying of us today as his bride. Verse 15 of Acts 9, of Acts chapter 9. Go, go to Saul, for he is chosen to bear my name. He is a chosen vessel to bear my name to the Gentiles, to kings, and to the children of Israel. He's a chosen vessel of mine. You are a chosen vessel of God to bear the name of Christ in your lifestyle, in your words. And so Ananias obeyed. Oh, it's so awesome when we obey God. But we cannot obey God when we don't know what he wants, when we haven't asked him what he wants. So here was an awful, terrible, wicked man that a believer was sent to by God. That's the big picture. Sometimes God doesn't see it the way you do because he has the big picture. He says, this is a chosen vessel. This is not just a murderer, but a chosen vessel. And so Ananias obeyed. Will we obey? Will we ask God what he wants and obey? The earth is mourning and groaning, waiting for the earnest manifestation of the sons of God. And in the meantime, we're too zealous with our opinions. Oh, we fall into the trap that the enemy wants us to fall into. And we've really become unbelieving believers. It says in Acts chapter 9 verse 18, when Ananias laid his hand on him, immediately fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. And he obeyed God immediately. It says in verse 20, immediately he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. Hallelujah. So I want to conclude. Yes, this is the message today. And I believe that you'll receive it by the Spirit. What does God want? Have you asked him? 
Too many believers have a zeal without knowledge. They have not bothered to ask God for his opinion, his plan, his will, his thoughts. God has a big picture, bigger than the things that we see in front of us and we hear in the media. He's a plan not only for America, for Israel, but for every nation. He cares about every nation. China, Iran, Iraq, Australia, Afghanistan, Germany, Africa. Africa right now is supposedly going through situation with COVID. God cares. God cares. He has a picture, a big picture, a plan. So we have to stop being wise in our own eyes. Stop. Get to know God. Get to hear his will. Get to know his opinion, his voice, what he wants. Stop being opinionated, arrogant, overbearing. Vain words, resisting God's plan and playing right into the hand of the enemy. Stop being an unbelieving believer. Because that's what it comes down to, unbelief. This morning as I was, as I was laid in my bed, you know, before I get up, I like to ponder with God. I like to ask him questions. I like to focus in on what he wants. And I heard, oh, it's so clear in my spirit, they don't believe. They don't believe. That's an indictment that you're a believer and don't believe. The Bible says the devils believe and tremble. Why? You've got to remember Satan, who's the head of all the devils, was the head, was one of three head angels in heaven, very close to God. He knows. He knows. So it says he believes and he trembles. And here we are, access to him that the devil does not have, hooked up to him that the devil is not anymore, and we don't believe. God help us in this hour. God help us. I want to end by bringing a message. I've got two names. Jewel. 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 J-E-W-E-L. And Josie. And I've got a word for the United States of America. Which means for us all. So Jewel. God said, like your name, he loves it when you talk about him. He says, every time you talk about him, he writes it. And in the end, he's going to make up jewels for you. And you want those jewels because you want them to be in a crown that you can cast at his feet. What else do we have to give him? But what he gives to us, a crown. So jewel. God says he loves it when you talk about him. But it's at that place where you're beginning to let the world encrode, encroach upon your beliefs. You're beginning to doubt. You're beginning to say, God, did you really say that? And that's why it's important to write down what God says. Put the date. Put the scripture back in and have it ready so you can go back to it. That book of remembrance he has for you, you need to keep one also. So Jewel, get, get, get back with your God. He has need of you. And Josie, God said, Josie, it's time to grow up. It's time to put down your sand bucket. It's time to get out of the sandbox. It's time to be the mature bride of Christ. It's time to begin to ask Christ 
Who's your example? Who's your husband, the bridegroom? It's time to begin to ask him, what is your pleasure? Like a, a wife needs to please. I was reading that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I think verse 32 to 34. It says, the man must care about the things of the world so he can please his wife. And, and that's what God does for us. And also the wife must care about the things of the world, how she can please her husband. So it's time, Josie, to please your husband, God, the bridegroom, Christ, by asking him, what do you want of me? Amen? And the word that God gave me for the United States of America is Zechariah chapter 12. And it speaks to Israel. And remember, Israel represents all believers because we, the Christians, are adopted, Romans 11 tells us, into the root, into Israel. We're adopted. He has not gotten rid of Israel. Israel is everything to him. Israel is his firstborn. But we're adopted into that. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so when I speak of Israel, I am speaking to the believers. And I'm also speaking to America, the United States of America. And the Bible says in Zechariah 12:1, the burden of the word of the Lord against the United States of America. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. This is God we're talking about. That's why we need to shut our mouths with our opinions. He's the God that stretched out the heavens. He's the God that laid the foundation of the earth. He's the God that put the spirit in man and can take it out. God says in Zechariah 12, 2, Behold, I will make Jerusalem, and I love this, because in the center of Jerusalem is the USA. So now he's speaking to those in the USA, those in the nations, those in Israel, those wherever who choose to follow him, his opinion. He's speaking to them when he said Jerusalem. This is the set that he's pulled out the remnant from all who wouldn't listen. He says, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay sage against Judah and Jerusalem. So when the enemy comes to his people, He'll cause his people to be a cup of drunkenness to the enemy. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples, all who would heave away at it, all who's, who are weaving away at the USA with all their lies, with all the things that they're doing in the background, thinking that God doesn't see. He said, I will make my people, those that I love, my truth, a heavy stone for all peoples who would heave away at my truth, at my people, and will surely cut in pieces. And even if the whole earth, all the nations stand against what God is going to do, it wouldn't work. God says, in that day, I will strike every horse with confusion. And that speaks to the power. I will strike every power, every authority in conf with confusion. And its rider, those who are behind the scenes, orchestrating all the evil against the United States of America, against the nations. He said, I will strike them with madness. And I will open my eyes to the house of Judah 
And the governors of Judah shall say in their hearts, The inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. Listen, God has had enough. The cup is overflowing. So this is the hour when you, as God's child, have got to decide where you stand. There is no middle ground. You're at a hot or you're cold. God said, if you're neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. And if you're cold, you got nowhere to go but out. So we need to be full of zeal for the Lord with knowledge. We need to ask him, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? What is your opinion? Amen? This is a serious hour. God is moving by his spirit. He's pulling in a harvest of souls who will love him, who will love him and serve him and value his opinion. Be one of those, all right? God bless you, and I will talk with you Sunday, the Lord be willing. All right, be blessed, be thankful.